Hello everyone, it's me, Wokey, here with uh, another episode of To Be Released. Um, it's just me today. Uh, Zen was unfortunately too busy with work, and I tried to find a last minute replacement for him, but it just didn't work out. I would ask my brother, but he doesn't know anything about Dokkan, and I feel you have to have... Honestly, I know only about 50% more than he does, I guess, since I am technically trying to get back into Dokkan and stuff. But either way, I feel you have to have some knowledge of Dokkan to at least... It would taint the sanctity sanctity of the big boy scale, so... I still wanted to do this because, you know, keep it consistent, you know what I mean? To be released stops for nothing. So we're going to continue on, it's just going to be me. And the two units up on the big boy scale are two very special units. Our first ever sponsored units uh, from a uh, very, uh, it's sponsored by a very nice company or a group of people, I guess. Let me just find, let me find my notes. Uh, these two were suggest suggested to us by a Rayleigh watch. And they say, hey, Woki and Zen, uh, love the show. Would really wish if you were to put two of the Ping Penguin Village Adventure units up on the big boy scale. Much love, all the members of Aureli Watch. Well, Aureli Watch, I will gladly do that. Zen is not here, but I swear that um, I will do justice to these two units. So I think the obvious ones would be uh, Aureli, but I believe Aureli should, deserves to be looked at with Zen here. So we'll actually go for some of the more weirder ones. Let's go for... You know what? I'm just going to knock out the three uh, other units in the banner that no one talks about. So let's start with uh, Sour Man. Sour Man is physical. His leader skill is HP and defense 60% up. His super attack is a hand grenade. And I usually don't mention the super attacks, but this one should be mentioned because um, when he uses the hand grenade, he loses 7% of the HP. That's, yeah. And only for, like, supreme damage. And his passive is the Bravest Finger. When HP is 50% or above, key plus 5, and all enemies attack and defense, minus 20%. Um, there's no easy way to say this, but Sour Man sucks. He is, uh, I like that he is a parody of Superman. And his face kind of looks like an asshole. But other than that, there's really nothing to him. His passive... Well, it was is not good. Let me just start by that. There are units who do the same, don't have a restriction on HP, and also th their passive skill doesn't make you do a super attack that actually makes you the game. It makes you hurt yourself. You deal more damage to yourself than the enemy can to you. He is the Dan of Dokkan. He is an SSR that hurts himself, and if you if the Aureli banner ever comes back, who knows? He is the one unit that you would hate to pull. Now, if the banner did come back, I would hope Sour Man would get a TUR that maybe fixes a lot of his stuff, that makes him better, that maybe gets rid of the stupid 7%. But I feel like even if they gave him a Dokkan, he would remain a joke. So, in terms of how big this boy is, I like the bow tie, I like the look. The asshole face is just too much, and I believe he deserves a 1 out of 5 big boy. And his name is Hero of Penguin Village. So, <sighs> Sour Man joins the big boy scale at 1 out of 5. Let's see the next unit now. Next unit on the list. Without Zenrot here to provide more context, we go through these so quickly. Uh, next unit on the list, we have General Blue, and his uh, name is called Dogged Pursuit. His leader skill is uh, int types, HP and defense 60% up. This was, by the way, I don't know if you remember this, when the Aureli banner first came out, this was before, um, this was back, leader skills for units that are not Dokkan Fest have always been kind of shitty. And even some Dokkan Fest units, I would argue, have shitty um, leader skills, but at least back in the time, you could say it's such a big uh, boost to stats that maybe without the key we can make up for it it's not that way anymore you use this guy as your leader and it's like why why would i do this super attack is telekinesis extreme damage and great chance to stun enemies similar to the sr blue 
And his passive skill is Aces in the Hand, medium chance that all enemies attack, minus 20%. So first off the bat, his passive is worse than the SR version. There's back, let me, t- let me say, back in the fucking day, maybe there was some use to minus attack 20%. There was, like, some dudes who'd say, like, oh, if you just keep minusing their attack, they can't do anything to you. But now in today's Dokkan environment, that doesn't do shit. Like, and also, his one thing is stunning, but all he can stun with now is a super attack. But if you want a, a general blue that super attacks, you use the old one. The one thing I will say about this unit, though, that's pretty cool, is that he has a backpack, a girly backpack, and a knife, and he always holds it in his sprite. So I don't know. Um, I don't know how much that's worth, but to me, I'd say that's a worth at least a two out of five big boy. His, the SR is a better, and even then the SR is at best also a two out of five big boy, but I feel the sense of style, the fact that he just completely gets whooped by a Rayleigh. This is the version that completely gets his ass kicked. Thus, eventually like, man, General Blue, I want to say General Blue was like kind of... Actually, you know what? Now that I more I want to say about General Blue, he also has like this really weird um, Shotokan uh, obsession that is in the English dub. They hit it by saying like, oh, you look like my brother. But in Japan, it was like, hello, little boy. I love you. So now that I'm double <laughs> thinking about it, I'm going to put General Blue as a one out of five big boy. He does not deserve the two. He is on the same tier as Sour Man. Uh, if they were to doke on this dude, I have no fucking idea how to make this guy good. Like, he would need a full overhaul. That's how old this fucking dude is. But yeah, that's, um, that's General Blue. That's another one out of five big boy. Again, the units that were not really, were not the best. Uh, let's go now. Next unit is Mercenary Tau, Ruthless Assassin. His leader skills, tech types, attacked 50% up. His Dodon Ray, nothing special. Declaration of War, attack 100% up. And just kind of it. And then his links are what you would expect. Um, first of all, I love that this Mercenary Tau just always has the, the fucking pole everywhere he goes. He's the only unit that isn't or Rayleigh or Obatron that is like kind of usable like his passive is not good high chance of attack 100% up is the same reason why a lot of that Beerus is is that when you put your hands in the when you put your faith in luck the luck can fuck you in any many different ways so sometimes he's good and then sometimes he's just pure trash and even then it's 100% up is not good anymore it's not enough anymore uh i feel if he did get a dokkan maybe if they made it to a i don't know 200 percent chance then it would be really funny then maybe he'd stand a chance but i would prefer it if he just had a straight up attack up 130 percent let's say because when it w- i think it'd be funny if he was slightly stronger than super saiyan 4 goku but that's a pie in the sky kind of deals if anything he would have a they would keep the high chance and then he would i don't know hmm. i just don't know but uh for mercenary tau i feel in pure style category he's a three out of five big boy i'm a big fan of mercenary tau especially this version of mercenary tau who was like fucking badass and he would show up and he fucking threw a pole and he rode the pole and then he killed general blue by like sticking his tongue out and touching his neck i mean he's a badass and it's unfortunate that he had to fight goku and once goku got powered up he turned into a real punk but that's the way of the world right all right this is the last unit on aureli's banner i completely forgot about him but it's okay i kind of lump him in with aureli because it makes sense. We have Obachaman. Obachaman. Apologies if I'm saying it weird. This is the only... The Rayleigh units are the only one... I guess the Rayleigh is also pronounced Arale. I'm not going to say it that way. But anyway. Uh, he says the power of politeness. Ag- agility types. HP and the defense. 60% up. He is the hello cannon. Causes supreme damage to the enemy. And he has a sincere heart. Attack and defense. 60% up when facing only one enemy. And then he has the classic links. 
So if he were to get a Dokkan, let's say, um, I think he's the one unit that isn't a really or mercen like even I think Mercenary Tao, they could very easily screw up Mercenary Tao. I think he, because he has attack and defense, they could change that to a hundred percent and then remove facing only one enemy. And then he becomes a very good linking partner with Aureli. And you need that because Aureli doesn't have any other linking partners besides women and Obachan. And that's it. That's kind of it. Like a lot of her links. And even then, to be poor Obachan, he has a lot of weird links like Courage and Gentleman, Brainiacs, things that, um, Mechanical Menaces, things that Aureli just does not have. But I think in terms of pure just like i'm beating shit out of people with this tiny boy i think he's pretty good for that uh in terms of what does he get i really like that he's just super polite so i'm going to give him a hmm i'm gonna say for right now he's a three out of five big boy with the potential to maybe become a four out of five only chance he becomes a 5 out of 5 later on is that he's such a perfect partner and support to Aureli that he gets to that level. But for right now, I say 4 out of 5. I like his style. I like his suspenders. I like his weird uh, devil head look. I think he's pretty cool. And that's all the units in Aureli's banner besides Aureli. Uh, Sorry, I'm just saying it too, so many different times. Uh, one day, we will talk about Aureli. And we will talk about when... Aureli Watch's job is no longer needed, which is um, telling us when the Aureli banner is coming back. And, uh, you know, keep fighting for that day. Keep fighting for the future, as uh, Paul McCartney said in his Destiny track. Anyway, uh, thank you, Aureli Watch, for giving us our sponsored units to look at. Uh, big fan, as always. Uh, now let's go on to questions. Questions, again, if you want to send them to me, send them to my Twitter. That's the best way for me to get them. That's the long and short of it. Oh, man. Um, I'm, just gonna, I'm not going to reply to you here to keep you in suspense. But El, El Ningen, you did not miss the cutoff date. I will still accept it. Um... So here are the questions. We have 18 questions from people. Very Thank you very much. I asked this at the last minute. So uh, I actually went to bed. There were zero questions. <laughs> so I was about to say, well, if there's no questions, maybe I'll just answer some questions about me. And then all the unfortunate people who came to watch to be released will hear not a lot of Dokkan talk, but about just me talking. So anyway, uh, let's start. First question comes from... Uh, page slash Saber Backlash or... Chief Sabert, that's what I know her as. Uh, apparently one of the few female fans that I have that uh, YouTube does not recognize. So they're out there, but again, I appreciate all female fans I have, but YouTube has to say I have at least one. Then it's a victory. Uh, but keep keep watching me. Keep liking my stuff. Uh, if you like it, of course. I'm not, you know, don't like stuff that I do that you don't like. Uh, that's okay, too. You know, I'm not, I'm a human. Anyway, get on to the fucking question. How about that? Instead of me going on a weird rant. Uh, so now that Legends has Kale, is Gogeta Blue the biggest tease release in Legends? Um, I think in terms of pure hype over the Burly movie, it is Gogeta Blue. In terms of what I think would be other hype stuff, I still think that legends is in a place that dokkan isn't where dokkan anytime there's a new stuff that's released we're like oh yes 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 this is the hype this is the hype um because the second the broly movie was announced they're like okay so when we get in this broly uh unit obviously they're gonna come at the same time <sighs> where legends doesn't have that problem because it still has rose it still has uh ultra instinct it still has super saiyan blue vegeto it still has regular vegeto for god's sakes and then uh, after that you get super saiyan vegeto so in terms of biggest tease that they could do, it's Gogeta Blue because he is technically in the game. Or at least his base form is in the game. And then after him, I would personally say it'd be Super Saiyan Blue, Vegito. Those are the two. It's the two fusions. It's the two fusions of the two big guys. Uh, that's what I think the biggest tease will be for Legends next. Thank you for the question. Uh, next one comes from Solrop. 
who I know as Carlos. And they said, what if they released an Aureli-only category? Uh, that'd be unfortunate because none of the Aurelis work together. It's actually very annoying that technically we have a Kitty Cat Aureli and we have regular Aureli, but Kitty Cat does not have her own um, name. Like Bee Pan, she doesn't get the Bee Pan treatment. I think they should fix that. It'd be nice, but yeah, what can you do? Uh, if they were to release it... I would say uh, uh, it would need to have an extremely strong leader, and we would need more. I think a Penguin Village could be possible if it comes back, but they would need to have a new banner that's not just Aurelis in it. There would need to be more, and I think that they would also need to actually release them to the general pool, and I don't know if they'll really do that. Thank you for the question, though. Next one comes from Gourmet Hunter Neo saying, I'll fill in, which is in regards to filling in for Zenrot. I'm sorry, you are too late. You sent this a little bit, you sent this 18 minutes ago, and I started recording about 16 minutes ago, so I missed it. Sorry, bud. Thank you for the question. Next question comes from, from Nux, my brother Nux. He says, Play Epic 7. Don't feel like it right now. Sorry, nothing against it. Next one comes from Yami Mom, my sister, and she asks, why was he a cuck? I don't know who is the cuck in this situation, unless she means Zenrot, in which I'll say Zenrot is not a cuck. Uh, <laughs> there's the title of today's TV release, Zenrot is not a cuck. Thank you. But he's not a cuck. Brandon DeVille, he asks, when are you going to join me and Nux in Epic 7? The answer is, just don't feel like it right now. I have a lot of gotchas to play, and I feel like if I get any more, I don't play any regular-ass games. And mobile games are cool and all, but I also like regular-ass games. Well, I'm in a very weird situation where, technically speaking, I don't have any of my consoles, so mobile gaming is my main thing. I have a Switch and everything else. Actually, I have to remember to get the new No More Heroes game, but that's another, that's another weird thing that I'll have to do eventually. Um... So for the answer is, for right now, just not looking. It looks unlikely, my friend. But thank you for the question, Brandon DeVille. Next one comes from El Ningen, and he asks, If Toei was willing to make a weekly continuation of Dr. Slump with the perfect budget slash animation staff and writing staff that last for a decade, that sounds pretty good. But that, that would last for a decade. But two catches. One, DBZ Broly is her sidekick. She's permanently fused with two other DB-related characters. Would you accept, and who would you pick? She's permanently fused with two other DB. Well, first of all, I think... First, would I accept? No. Because that's not the slump I want. It's similar to asking, like, oh, DB continues on forever, but only if it's in the GT-verse. I would say, no, that's not the thing I like. So I would not continue that. So... If I want Dr. Slump, I want Aureli in her, like, um, I want the original cast. I want all that. I want, I want the pig she rides as a motorcycle. I want, uh, Gotchons. I want all that stuff. Uh, but I would like to see this as, like, maybe, like, a, an episode. Like, this would be a pretty good episode. Like, DBZ Broly, for whatever reason, is her sidekick, and he's looking for Kakarot all the time, and he can't find him. And in terms of who she'd be fused with, I think she'd... So here's the weird thing. I think she would work best... I think the um, the fusion game on DS has a Rayleigh fused with two other DB characters, which is, I believe, it's Toa, the booby lady from... I'm going to guess is Xenoverse, but I actually don't know if she's actually 100% from there. The other one is Android 18. So it's a fusion of androids, and I would like to keep it so that she was uh, fused with, you know, maybe I'll go, say, 18 and Android 21 at the same time. But they would still keep... The thing I like about Aureli personally is her personality. Her licks are also, like, not something I really think about. She's a very cute kid. Uh, but if she fused with adult women, I don't know how that would look. But I'd say, hey, give it a shot. What's the worst that could happen? Really weird fetishes, I guess. Thank you for the question. Next question comes from Sim SimSima, which asked, How do you feel about Aureli most likely not making it to Jump Force? Because apparently they forgot about all the other shonen except for five of them. 
Uh, <sighs> I mean, she joins a very uh, fun cast of characters not added to Jump Force. I mean, unless you believe some of the rubers it's like well koro sensei isn't there so she joins the cast of like dudes let me, let me, let me make a dudes of dudes not in it it's a raleigh it's toriko it's um assassination classroom it's koro sensei it's it's madoka i think is how her name is which i don't know anything about her character but she has big stuff so i'm like okay that's pretty cool and uh boba bo has no representation at the moment I guess you could say Fizz is a North Star, but whatever. But you get my point. She joins, like, a bunch of people. Like, Lucky Man. Like, there's a lot of good dudes not in Jump Force that it's like, oh, well. She joins them. So I think it's a it's a damn shame, but it's not an uncommon shame. I do think it's funny that Dai made it in. So another shout-out to Akira Toriyama's art style that apparently everyone gets in but a rally. But I think with the fact that Dai's in it, I think there's a good shot of maybe she becomes DLC. Let's see. You know, I like to keep it posy. Thank you for the question. Uh, next question comes in from Faisu or Faku. No, not Faku. Faisu. Uh, what do you expect for the four-year? I expect GT shit. Thank you for the question. Next question. Noisy Worm asks, can I join? Uh, no, sorry. Once I've already committed to the idea of me doing this by myself, that was the only way it was going to go. Thank you. But thank you for asking. Thank you, Noisy Worm, for the question. The question comes from Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Johan, who asked, who popped your food to play virginity in Vidokan? I don't fucking remember. It's been such a long time. Um... Maybe it was Gogeta. You know, when it happened so long ago, you just don't remember. And even then, it's like, maybe. Uh, it's probably something dumb, like Android 18 or something. I'll go with Android 18. Thank you for the question. The answer is I don't remember or Android 18. So our next question comes from Dark Zeprom. What is your favorite Pokemon game and why? Oh uh it's pokemon gold and silver those that's my favorite in terms of the 250 pokemon i have a deep affection for i like the story of like they've pokemon i think since gold and silver has struggled to have something as cool as the idea of going back to the original place that it all started with and it's an idea that i really wish that they would like do in one of their games because there's nothing cooler than going back and like saying like holy shit this is the place that started at all and everything's different like it's a good like nostalgia trip where you go like okay so this is an update on brock and i feel like they've tried to do that with saying like oh check it out it's red and green and they're here but red and green visiting me is not the same as me going to where they live and seeing what what what's up what happened to the game corner is erica still sleeping is lieutenant surge still the lightning american like even even when you went back there like koga was an elite four member in johto but back in Kanto, his daughter had taken over. So I think that's why it's kind of my favorite and kind of remains my favorite to this day. Um, as someone who's always been like Pokemon battling is just something you do. It's not something I'm there for. I'm there for a lot of other things. And in terms of pure everything, presentation, story, like the ending of Gold Silver where you fight the original protagonist up on a fucking mountain, that's awesome. And that's why it stays as my number one. Like, and then if you were going to say the least, it's Ruby and Sapphire. In the original version, Omega Ruby is all right. Thank you for the question. Next question is from the Birdman. Where did you go? I miss you so. It feels like it's been forever since you've been gone. Please come back home. Thank you for the question. Next question comes from Arcana. Who used to be your favorite wrestler? Hmm. It's Eddie, it's Eddie Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero was my favorite. I remember saying, oh man, this is going to be, you know, I'm not afraid to admit it. Back, but back when he, uh, Eddie Guerrero, for those who don't know, was a fantastic uh, luchador. Came from Mexico, comes from a long lineage of Mexican wrestlers, the Guerrero family. 
And his main motto was lie, cheat, and steal. And he's one of the few wrestlers who, even when he was a good guy, he still lie, stole, and cheat. The only difference is that you liked it when he did it. Is that people realize, like, he was so charismatic, even though he was cheating all the time, you just loved him. Like, when he used to do stuff, like, in WCW, he used to make his... um nephew chavo wear shirts that says eddie guerrero is my favorite wrestler and he would get angry at him when he fucked up he would blame him for everything and you loved eddie because of his charisma because of his athleticism in the ring like he could he could bring it in all aspects of it and growing up there wasn't a lot of like hispanic dudes to look up to besides like maybe my dad and i guess zorro but i didn't really have much else because there wasn't really a main focus on it so i had wrestling and i had eddie guerrero and I remember being a kid when he died of the drug overdose, just, it, it fucking killed me, man. Even now, I'm, like, getting a little teary-eyed about it. He was a, it was a shame to see him go, and to this day, I'm like, I can't believe that they treat wrestlers this way. It's not right. Like, they should be treated better. And it's a shame that so many, like, it's, it's fucked up to think about, like, these dudes who you used to love so much. When you get older, it's like, oh, I used to love that guy. What what happened to him? And you learn what happened to him, and you go, oh God. Most of the most of the time, you get some good answer, like, oh, he still works there, but he doesn't wrestle anymore. And you go, oh, good. But then other times, it's like, oh yeah, Perry Saturn went missing for a while because of weird drug stuff, and then he eventually f- was found again. But he had left because he wanted to get himself clean, and he's okay now. But it's like, this motherfucker was missing. Did what? But yeah, Eddie was my favorite. And then if there's another favorite after him, it was the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Uh, another wrestler who was unfortunately passed, but I loved him. And I love his sons, too. Both Goldust and Cody are fantastic wrestlers. But number one with a bullet, it's Eddie. Number two, the American Dream, American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. When he died, so did the American Dream. Thank you for the question, Arcana. Whew. Getting free of these. Uh, Primus asked... Since active skills are going to be in the game, you think Dokkan Fest event should be harder? No. Um, Dokkan Fest shouldn't be hard. Because you need to grind them to get your units. But then once you're finished grinding them, what hard event do you do? I think what should happen is that Dokkan Fest should be challenging, but not hard. If you have the right links, they can be beaten easily. And then there should be other content that's not uh, Super Battle Road or anything else that active skills would actually be useful in. Like, I don't think Dokkan Festival should be all that hard, because if they're too hard, then new people can't really beat them, and then even then you need a better and bigger team. I think a lot of the harder PvE stuff should be, like, separate events where they go, like, okay, here's... Which is something I can't believe they haven't done besides with Super Battle Road. It's like, I want Super Battle Road, but I also don't want Super Battle Road. I just want a one really hard thing that's like separate from everything else. And they go, here's a very very hard battle. Go at it. Nothing else. That's all I want. I don't want like boss rush shit. And, uh, and I want challenging events that are like a separate thing. It's like, okay, here's this. Or like a story event where they say, okay, here's the story event. But then here's an actually very hard version of it. Only a couple people can do it. That's what I would like, and I think Dokkan Fest should be just what they are, which is something to grind for. Nothing else, nothing more. But thank you for the question. Uh, Paint Boy asks, when Kingdom Hearts 3 is coming out in less than a week, what other game curse and development hell do you think we'll actually release in the near future? <sighs> I don't know. Is there? Where is? What's really the, the next big thing? I guess the next Final Fantasy game, but is that really fair? Because they haven't started working on it? It's not Dragon Quest that's already working on something. Um, hmm. I don't know. You know what? I want Crackdown 3 to finally be released, just because I'm tired of Microsoft showing it at E3 and going like, Crackdown 3. I'm like, fuck it, release it. Saints Row the 4 came out. Uh, Saints Row 4 came out. And it's basically just Crackdown, and they made that game in a year. And you're telling me that you can't make Crackdown 3 in the span of, like, four years? And I know game development is hard and all that, but come on. I don't know what's keeping it up. That's the next game I would like to see released. Thank you for the question. El Drago asks, Radiant Dawn and Battle Radiance Remake 1? 
I think that'd be pretty cool for the Switch, but I also think they stopped making Fire Emblem games on consoles. It's weird. I don't know why they stopped. Um, maybe because the market was all in the handheld, but I would like to see them return. Uh, a good way to see that is kind of like a remake where it's like, okay, two and two and one, Radiant Dawn, Path of Radiance, because you need both. Do not play one without the other, because one does ends weirdly and the other one makes no sense really you need a lot of context for like the beginning of stuff that's my feeling on it uh thank you for the question and super bright adrian says what are some of the other gotcha games represented by king of the hill okay so we're going by a character by character basis let's say that um buck strickland that's fake grand order 100 percent the way they spend their money and the way that they want money all the time. Peggy Hill is probably Naruto blazing just because it infuriates you in a lot of ways, but sometimes it's good and that makes it worse. Uh, and then just right next to it is, uh, hmm. let's see. I want to say the, the bleach game, brave souls, I believe it's called it's the bill Dotrieve. It's not really talked about that much as far as I can tell. And when it is, it's usually Valley being sad about it or Zahal being sad about it. And they go much similar to Bill Dotrieve. Um, hmm. Dragalia is kind of like Connie. It's very efficient, but just not 100% there, if that makes sense. Uh... I kind of want to see which 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 gotcha re represents Hank Hill, but none really reach the status of Hank Hill right now. I'm still waiting for that game to reach the Hank Hill status of uh, just pure goodness. Some caveats, but just good overall. Overall, uh, Shonen Or Collection is uh, Buckley, the dead boyfriend of Luann. Spoilers for anyone who's starting King of the Hill. Uh, Buckley eventually dies in a propane accident, which is real fucked up. And then all Japanese gotchas are just Boomhauer because you don't understand what the hell they're saying most of the time. Uh, hope that helps. Thank you, Super Bright Adrian, for the question. And with that, every single question has been passed out. Every single question has been answered. <sighs> Man, what an adventure. Even with just me, 30 minutes long. So just to do a quick update on the big boy scale, just as a quick reminder, what the five out of five big boys are Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta, which I guess technically is uh, Super Saiyan Gogeta that transforms into Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta. Uh, Krillin, uh, Piccolo Krillin, Waifu Chi Chi, and those are our five out of fives. The new additions to the list are Obachan coming in with three out of five, uh, Mercenary Tao, three out of five, and General Blue and Sour Man who come in at one out of five. So, Raiders fan. Hopefully you will update the list soon. Someone once uh, said that we should add a list to the end of the show. And I should do that, but I'm always super busy. So hopefully one day um, when I'm not so busy, maybe I'll make a little list to always remember to put at the end. Uh, but until that day, I want to thank you all. Anyone who's listening to this, I know a lot. it's a little weird to just have me with no Zen Rot. It's weird to not have a guy going, Oh! Uh, 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 and stuff. <laughs> uh, it's weird doing solo stuff. I like it. I just don't think I'm good at it. Uh, this is also weird because I'm not recording this at 2 o'clock in the morning, so I actually have some energy to me. Usually I'm very much like it. Well, I hope everyone out there has a wonderful day. Keep looking for the four year, and hopefully next time you hear me, I'll have Zenrot, or at least someone else here with me. So goodbye, everyone. Peace and love. Peace out.